Every hero needs a villain. In their search for the mask of creation, the Toa must face enemies raised from the dead. This is Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Day 3, Skull Scorpio. Hello, this is Santa here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Where on day 3, we'll be taking a look at Skull Scorpio, who is set number 70794, with 107 pieces. Now, Skull Scorpio is the most controversial, I think, of the sets. There's been a big debate, which is worse, Scorpio or Slicer. I reviewed Slicer yesterday, and I quite enjoyed him. So let's see what I think of Scorpio. Now, Skull Scorpio here is a Rahi of sorts. We don't have the official term Rahi, but he is a scorpion creature existing in the region of stone. As you can see here, of course, he is fighting Pohatu. And it shows off his mask-stealing gimmick. Which is really cool overall. Now he is based on a scorpion, a real life scorpion, so he does have a stinger tail along with six legs. There's a problem with those six legs. Let's take a look at Skull Scorpio. Now Skull Scorpio here, much like Lord of Skull Spiders, has received some comments because he is a, you know, creature and like Skull, Lord of Skull Spiders is a six-legged spider. This is a six-legged scorpion. Um, we're not going to talk about science because this isn't a real scorpion. This is a Rahi of sorts. Now, the Rahi were animals in the Bionicle universe in Generation 1. And that term is kind of carried over with the fans, but not really officially. But he is not necessarily humanoid. As you can see, he is a scorpion. And apparently Scorpios do exist in the region of stone, and this is a resurrected dead Scorpio. So, there is that. Now, Skull Scorpio himself is really cool looking um, in certain areas. Ignoring the tail, I like the way that the rib cage piece has been used once again, which is a very nice piece, and I like how the, all the transparent green matches up. I also like the claws do match the tips here on the blades. But other than that, it has a very consistent color scheme and doesn't abuse red and blue pins too much in this area. Um, so it's really nice looking. The legs are also the bone pieces from the Skull Warrior's bow, and overall it does look pretty cool. Now the tail section was what caused controversy at first. It's very Technic built. It has this blue pin that's open uh, back here. It's got these red pins throughout and it looks really obnoxious from this side. Plus it's pretty much a Technic gimmick and as you can see it does swing forward to close the blades. Um, but yeah it's a very much the figure kinda got put into the gimmick that they created here. It's a very nice gimmick and it does work, it's just kind of sacrifices the whole figure. But it does have articulation back here so you can move the, the tail so it can get closer here or farther away if you'd like, which is pretty nice. You also get fully ball joint here, here, and here, and here. So he at least has more articulation than Lord of Skull Spiders because he does have two joints in the neck as well. But other than that, it's really hard to do things with Skull Scorpio because his legs don't move. Um, they are all solid. They don't even swivel. They are solid in there. That is it. They don't move. This is partially for st stability, but also I think parts count. If this had been a $20 set, we might have seen articulated legs. But because it's only a $15 set, it's not going to get articulated legs. But speaking of things that are kind of disappointing, the mask here is the same as Skull Bashers. And the color is not even any different. Um, which is problematic, but it's a very nice looking mask. I really would have liked something more Scorpion-like for Skull Scorpio. Instead of just the same mask we will see with Skull Basher. But looking at Skull Scorpio here, let's talk about his gimmick. Let's talk about his gimmick. His gimmick is the reason why he got a lot of cutbacks. Let's see if it actually works properly. So the question of whether his gimmick works? Well, let's see. His gimmick is hard to line up, but once you don't knock his own mask off, you can actually go and if you line it up just right, you can grab the mask and rip it from the face. It works really well. Once you line it up, it just pulls a mask better than any other mask pulling gimmick. So at least the gimmick that kind of wrecks him succeeded. Now that he has Pohatu's golden mask, he can wear it, but not being the true bearer, it becomes corrupted. 
As you can see, it's a trans lime green corruption infection to this mask. And it looks very nice. It looks really awkward on Scorpio, though. This guy just does not look good with other masks on. Honestly, I think this weirds me out a little bit. Because unlike the others where they're humanoid and they just swap faces is like a Rahi beast. And yeah, I have a feeling this won't be showing up in the story. And I might have some insight thanks to a book coming out that that may not have happened. But it looks really weird and we're going to cut away because this is freaking me out a little bit. So overall, how is Skull Scorpio? In my opinion, I think he's not as good as Slicer. And that's just because... And even though he does have some cool elements to him and he's a solid build compared to Slicer who falls over and has, you know, a gimmick that doesn't work as well, I don't think Scorpio looks as good. Slicer is very consistent in his color scheme, only having a couple pieces kind of stand out. But Scorpio has a lot standing out, and the tail design I just don't like. It's really weird, it doesn't work color scheme-wise, and it just seems like a mash of parts stuck together to try to get a gimmick to work. And honestly, you're sacrificing the rest of the figure for this gimmick. I don't think it's worth it. But, if you like Scorpio, by all means, stick to your opinion. I think that he's got a lot of great elements to him. He's just not my favorite of the sets, and I don't like him as much as I do Slicer. Also, those spikes keep turning on me. Overall, though, Scorpio is still solid. He is a great Lego set. Not a great action figure. That is all for day three here on Bionicle Week, the Resurrection of Evil. Stay tuned for tomorrow. We'll be taking a look at the Skull Basher, who is the largest of the $15 Skull Villain sets. So until then, be sure to check out three videos a week here on Soundout 12, Model Kit Monday on Mondays, Soundout's Toy Chest the Mystery Review Series on Thursdays, and the Soundout Review on Saturdays. And also check out HeroTaco.com for all your Bionicle news and more. Until next time, this is Sad Out saying goodbye. <laughs>